What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and I've got 10 brand new Cydia tweaks I'd like to share with you guys. I think you'll be pretty happy about these. I know I haven't made a video like this in a while. There's just been so much else uh, that's been going on. It's been occupying my attention, so sorry, but I'll start making these things more regularly. But anyways, in this video, I've got 10 brand new ones. Some of these have been updated. Otherwise, all compatible with the latest iOS 8.4 and 8.3 jailbreaks. Now, this does require a jailbreak, of course. Lucky for you, iOS 8.4 Point one is still far from release, so you guys can jailbreak right now on either Mac or uh, Windows down below. And if you guys don't know why to jailbreak, I have a whole bunch of compelling reasons down there, so uh, check that out as well. So I'm going to be showing you the latest and greatest city of tweaks in this video, and I'll follow up this video with another one real quick. But there's a good collection in here, and I'm going to be showing you guys how to fix Snapchat with Phantom and all that without having to downgrade or anything ridiculous like that. Anyways, before I begin, one more thing. Go ahead and click on that link up there if you guys want to get the full tweak list, and you will need custom sources, especially for Phantom for Snapchat. So uh, go ahead and click on there, and it'll give you all the sources, some bonus tweaks, and uh, the wallpaper I'm using in this video. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump jump into these new Cydia tweaks. So the first one I'm gonna be sharing with you guys is called Control Pane. It's pretty much a control center, but a simplified version of it and easy to access from anywhere. So uh, triple click on the home button or whatever other activator gesture you guys set. And this is the screen you guys will get. So in here you have a plethora of toggles you can select. So I've got my power off and respring one right here. And over here, pretty much you can customize which ones show up over here and there's a ton. So uh, it's pretty much control center, but a more advanced version of it. You also have brightness and uh, of course you have your volume over here as well. So let's go ahead and check out the settings. So in here, there's quite a bit you can do. First off, you can make it appear on the left. If you like the left choice, you can make it a darker theme if you don't like the one that it's at right now. And there's the activation methods over here. So this is what you're gonna use with activator to set it however, however you want. I just have mine on a triple click and it's pretty useful. So there's a lot to uh, change in here and you have to do respring in order for it to uh, take effect. I'm gonna go ahead and do that, but I would recommend it. It's like a control center with more advanced features and uh, closely related to my very next tweak, but I just wanna show you guys the darker theme right now. So there you go, and that's what it looks like, super cool. Now here's a dock bar. So it's very closely related to a control pane. Now it's also set by an activator gesture. Mine is set to a double tap on the status bar, and this is what you'll get. So you'll have a very easy way to switch between applications while still being able to do what you were doing in the background. It's a very unobtrusive app switcher instead of having to go into this view right here. So um, you basically have your applications right here. You can actually preset these to the applications that you wanna see in here. You can slide through them just like this. And let me show you the practical use for this. So Say you're uh, doing something in messages, texting someone, and you quickly want to go to another application. You basically have them right here. You can easily switch between them just like that. And um, basically that's it. So let me go ahead and show you the settings. Inside there's activation methods. And in here, application filters, you can go ahead and choose which ones you want to appear in there and which ones you don't. Very handy little way to uh, swap applications and you can change it to a left orientation as well. So a simple way to get an unobtrusive way to switch apps. Now this right here is called Sir Doc. It's basically a way to get animations it's very similar to dock and roll, just a little bit more functionality to your actual dock down here. So uh, this is one is a rotary, pretty much just swap through them. But let me show you some other ones that are available and uh, you can change the carousel settings in here. So mine's a wheel right now. Let me change it to a time machine. You can actually choose which applications will appear in there. So now if I go back here, as you can see, they just fade in just like that, like a time machine, which is pretty cool. And the more applications you have in here, the niftier it looks. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that once again to a uh, cylinder. So super cool, some animations. It's actually half the price of dock and roll. So it's a very nifty one. It looks really cool. And like I said, the more applications you stuff in there, the better it'll look. Now, the one thing I don't like about it is that it creates doubles. So when you add one in here, it'll create another application out here, which you put in here, which doesn't make sense to me, but I'm sure there's a setting in there to fix that. But overall, really cool. Add animations to your dock. Now, Acapella 2 has just been updated for iOS 8.4. And what it does is it basically brings an easier interface for controlling music to your device. So instead of having to use the little tiny buttons, it's simpler. All you have to do is uh, press play let me turn this down so just press play and it'll begin playing a song if you want to switch a song just slide over here and it'll have a nice animation right into the next song so it's a little easier for me I shouldn't, but when I switch music during driving, I don't like to press those little tiny buttons. You know, it distracts you. This, on the other hand, is simpler. You can easily just swap through songs just like this, play, pause them, and this is available on the lock screen as well. So it's a cleaner interface for your actual music, which is really cool. Now if I press play, 
it's available right here as well. So uh, very, very simple, very nice. Now what you're seeing when I'm actually in my control center, that rounded look, I bet you guys like it. It feels right at home here on iOS 8 and what it's called is roundification. So it does require a custom source. So basically what it does is it rounds all of your alerts, pop-ups, your control center, your notification center, and it gives it this very nice look. So um, I really like how it just stands out like it's floating on your device and uh, works very well. I like how it still slides down it retains that function very beautiful I mean really really good looking and there are some settings for it as well so let's jump in here and in here you can actually choose which one you want to round which one you don't it actually rounds your switcher cards as well which I thought was a nice touch to it so that is really nice you can actually change the rounding effect how obvious you want it to be so you can shrink it make it better and there are some banners you can test so it changes your notifications as well which is super super cool I really like that so it's absolutely free check it out roundification Insidia. Now here's one of my favorites. This actually goes back to uh, way back in the day. So AquaBoard brings effects to your actual home screen. So if I slide, as you can see, it brings a ripple effect to your home screen. So you can interact with it, play around with it. It looks really cool. Now I don't know what effect this has on battery life, but to my eyes, it's very pleasing and it's worth it. I mean, it looks so freaking cool. Uh, very, very intuitive, very smooth, and I believe it works on the lock screen as well. So there are some themes in here as well. Let's try uh, this one down here. So it changes the effect at which you can uh, move the screen in the background with. So it's either more severe or less severe. Let's do shockwave. That sounds good. Oh man, so that's a really, really big one. But anyways, you know, customize how you want this to act. I like this one default, it works the best. And you can choose the frames per second. This is probably something that has to do with your battery life. So, oh wow, that is so fluid. That looks cool. So I definitely would recommend this one, AquaBoard. There's a lot of settings in here for you to play around with, but definitely check it out. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with this one, but this is Aeternum. So Aeternum has just been updated. It finally supports 8.4, and I personally like it better than WatchBoard. It works a little bit better. So it's been updated, and it works very well on iOS 8.4, especially with AquaBoard running in the background. So the new diamond layout is really cool. I basically get the Apple Watch layout on your phone. So really cool, you can change the layout and uh, zoom in, zoom out. You know, Moving applications, still the same, so you'll be able to move them around while they spin. Really cool. Definitely check it out. Aeternum for iOS 8.4 finally updated. Now let me show you one that's uh, really useful for time in Safari. So this is actually called Safari Swiper. It'll allow you to go through your pages and swap to them just by swiping down here. So you can easily swap through tabs without having to go into here and swap every single time. So just like this, just swipe, swipe, and it'll boot you into the next one and same uh, vice versa. So really cool, just swap you through pages inside of Safari, save you a little bit of time. It's actually a really nice feature. I would like to see Apple implement it. This is really cool, you know, it's smart easily go through tabs without having to open the tab view every single time. Oh, here's a really tiny one, but still works very good. So uh, this is called time until alarm and it's very simple. All it will do is give you the amount of time you have between now and when an alarm is set. And you can put that view right here on your lock screen. By default, it'll show up inside of the alarm application. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up clock if I could find it. Actually, when you look at your alarms, it'll now tell you what time it'll appear. So there are settings that'll allow you to put that onto your lock screen and it's really useful. This is a default feature on Android. I don't see why it's not available on iPhone, but it's really nice to have time until alarm. And lastly, guys, I'm going to be showing you how to go ahead and fix the Snapchat application and finally get Phantom up and running. So as you guys know, in the latest version that has been released, this is what you get when you use any third party tweaks on your device. So it has been locked. Now you got to go to this website and unlock it. It only takes about a minute or so, but it's annoying and you can't use your favorite tweaks with Snapchat anymore. Well, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to fix that. The latest version of Phantom is still in beta, but it works good and it works with the latest version without needing to downgrade Cydia. All it does is it carves out that feature found in uh, the latest version of Snapchat that does this crap. Seriously, it'll just remove it and you'll finally be good. So let me go ahead and show you how to do that. So first off, if you have this, obviously go ahead and unlock your account on your computer or on your device and uh, then go into Cydia and we're going to add a custom source. That custom source is the one that has this and that'll be down below in the description. Anyways, once we we add that source this is what we're going to see inside the latest version of phantom so we're going to go ahead and install that 
in a second here. I'll be right back. All right, and there you guys go. So now I have Phantom running on the latest version of Snapchat. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you that this does work. So a Phantom is available right here. You can go ahead and filter this right here. And there is a location spoof for uh, Phantom as well. So you can live where you're at and say you're somewhere where you're not. But let me go ahead and show you that I am uh, on the latest version of Snapchat. So over here, 9.12.1. So there you go. The latest version of Phantom beta on latest version of Snapchat. And it does work great. So uh, there you go, guys. That's how to get Phantom up and running on the latest version of Snapchat. And uh, overall, there you go. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Just wanted to share the latest and greatest city of tweaks with you. Of course, I'm going to be releasing many more tweak videos in the future. Uh, yeah, sorry I was a little behind on that, but I'll be posting more from now on. Now, as far as the jailbreak goes, you guys have a good amount of time until 8.4.1 is going to come out. And as long as you guys don't update, you really shouldn't have any sort of problem. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Enjoy all of these tweaks on your jailbroken and liberated device. Have a great day. Peace.